Hey guys, Josh here. Welcome back to another video. Today's video, I'm going to show you Octopus again. Maybe Octopus Girl would be one of the most attractive or hot techniques at the moment on social medias. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make Octopus from Z-Guard with using Kimura Trap. And from that position, I show you the back take and the crucifix entry. Hope you guys enjoy. So instead of starting from figure four like this, we like to make the shin shield. People usually call knee shield, but recently I realized that knee shield is too shallow to make a control. That's why I much prefer to make this one really deep. Look, I completely get my knee to the other side like this. Then I use my shin like this. So that allows me to stay on my side like this. Then it's getting harder for him to reach my upper wheel as well. I automatically turn to the side. Then I slowly move my body like towards his left side like this. This kind of approach. As I make the really deep shin shield, like I say, I, I'm kind of on left side of his body like this. That's why although he wants to reach my upper body like this, this is gonna be their angle, see? My chest is pointed that direction. His chest is pointed that direction like this. I'm in front of his left arm. So automatically he in, exposes his left arm. So we set up the Kimura. Then this is not for submission. We just want to get a reaction. That's why I call this one as fake Kimura. Okay, the first thing, I got to defend my neck, which is super important. I'm not going like, to commit to attack by like, using my arm like this. Once I hug my like this, I'm in trouble. So that's why. So I hold it here and here like this. Right? Then from now, before I make the Kimura lock, I want to complete isolate arm. That means I need to open his elbow. So from this position, like T-Rex arms like this. And then I'm going to open up his elbow like this. Then I will see that I use my right arm in multiple ways. Not only use my palm like this. I use my forearm and elbow joint. Forearm against his forearm. Elbow joint around his elbow joint. I'm oh, sorry. Elbow joint around his wrist. Then I can use my arm as a frame to protect my neck and flare his elbow like this. Then after that, I set up the Kimura. So from here, left arm goes over, like back of his elbow, then I open it, like reinforcing the frame. So he can no longer close his elbow. Even this time, if he tries to push her out with like 100% resistance like this, we cannot set up a Kimura, but at least we create a space. Then we can do lots of things to attack from this position. That's gonna be another story. Today, let's just focus on Kimura. So this, hold. Then after that, as if I scratch his full arm with my left, right hand, then I can make Kimura like this. Then once I set up, seems like easy to finish Kimura, but in a shin shield, uh, as I make really like, extremely angle like this, it's kind of difficult to make the leverage. As soon as I attempt like a submission hold, submission pros action like this, I'm going to be flat on the mat. That means I lost the advantage of this position. Once I put my left shoulder on the ground, I can no longer yank it. Then Ed is free to drive his way forward and close his elbow. Then I'm in trouble like this. That's why in this situation, instead of finishing Kimura, I much prefer to use Kimura as in trap. So from here, if his hands close his body, he can grab something like such as regular Kimura defense. Then it's getting hard to proceed in it. So in your outer void, I want to keep his hand away from him. Then I slightly open his elbow like this. So this is a kind of fake Kimura action like this. But just in case, if I can put his hand on his back like this, I'm able to finish, but we can unlikely expect a movement. That's why it's more like making the frame to have a reaction. Then from now, definitely he wants to defend and escape for sure. Like he does, he pushes up to escape. Or since he's fine difficult to hide his arm, he starts extending his arm like this, see? Like straight Kimura. That's a great idea for him to defend Kimura. In order for me to keep the Kimura, I need to bend his elbow like this type of angle, I gotta keep in it. But he does a good job. Before I do, he starts extending like this. So this time I will see that it's getting harder for me to keep Kimura, but at the same time, he's giving a space inside his arm. So this is a space we want to go underneath, like duck under, or like this type of movement. Let me show you that. So from here, I set up, he extends 
So that case, I slightly push his wrist away. By the time he goes, I get my hand in like this. So after that, there's a few tips I want you to do that. I'm not going to rush to hold his leg like this. This is really like a deep octopus. I want to look for the torso to control. So from this position, I want to make it. But the shishi is a little in the way. That's why in this situation, I'm going to extend my left leg. I take it off like this. By the time he goes, right, that's the less gap between me and him. Now I can come up like this. Then you can see from the top view, I want to make sure that I cuff the far side lap or armpit like this. This is where I want to grab it. No, neither near side hips or far side hips like this. This way. Then from the top, you can see, like making a double under hook, like a body lock under his armpit or lats. This is pretty strong. So this is the first thing I want to start with. Then once it's done, it's going to be depends on the reaction. If he try, still tries to hold my neck to come like this, which is not good. That's why in order to avoid. So I want to take advantage of this frame. As a lap, is, as a cup is armpits like this, that I can keep his head down. So from this position, as if I rely on his back like this. Right? The best case scenario, I want to completely shift his body and fall like this. But probably he wants to come back. So that's going to be a conflict like between me and him. I want to lean on him. He wants to come back. Then we can keep him around this line. That gives him a space to proceed in action. Okay, the first one is making a butterfly hack. So from this position, right, as I control like, his head like this, upper body, I can make space here. But it's too close to slide out. That's why from this position, I slide to hip escape. If I can, I want to even use my hand to push his knee away like this. There's a gap here, I start creating it. So the next thing is most complicated part in this technique from this position, like making a half butterfly. As I scoop my hip slightly, there's a gap here. I circle my leg, then I make a hook like this. As you can see that I make the still half guard and half butterfly like this. This is regroup position. Then I ready to slide out from this position. So once it's done, it's going to be pretty easy to proceed in action from here. Far side, I use my head, like a butterfly head. Near side, I slightly push his knee away. Those are pushing a person's knee away from you. That means you can find a space to pull this leg out. So from this position, you do like a sit-up escape, scooping hips away like this. Even this time, I don't want you to forget to lean on your partner. If you lean forward too much, that allows your partner to posture up to escape like this. So you're going to lose the structure. That's why you lean on your partner like this. That's why this is a really busy situation. You got to map two things at the same time. But once you can pull out your riding, it's just a matter of time from this position, hand on the mat. Get your hips up like this. Then with your right hand, you're going to reach the far side hips like this. If you want to make it stable or a more dominant position, completely change the angle, then cap the hips. Now, this is just a back take from half curl. This is almost the same. From this position, I make seat bell or bring him down to the ground. Then I can take the back. But sometimes, you may not have time to pull this leg out, that shin shin. You may need to keep it. So in that case, let's just go like this. So we keep the shin shield, then still cup the far side like this. Then this situation, you need to slightly come up with your elbow, right? If you stay on the ground, so it's gonna be too much gap between you and your partner. You have still shin shield. If you stay on the ground level, I don't think you can reach the far side. Armpit, lat, that's why. Come up, then I hold it like this. Then from this position, right? Of course, whenever you have a chance to pull out the shin shield, that's great to make butterfly hook like this. But in this situation, you find it difficult. So in this case, you're going to slide out your right leg straight from this position. So you stay on your elbow in order to still keep the, uh, in order to keep the mobility. Scoop your hips out like this. Then once you can get your leg out like this. You can stay several situations. You completely slide out or kind of make a near side butterfly hook like this. Around a partner's knee like this. Then, as long as you're keeping it, 
you make a friend between you and a partner. As you can see, that my case, I use my legs around his hips. Then left arm behind his back like this. So it could be difficult for F to come back to my side, even though he tries to do, I block him. Then during the time I do, I scoop my hips up. And that's a similar movement as arm drag back take, like this. Then this one is way like uh, looser than the last one. That's why you may going to be scrambled from this position. But in order to take advantage from this position, you want to reach the far side of the hip. So from here to reach like this. Then from that, you can do the same back take or as an option, you can even shift to crucifix. So recently, I really like this one. Like the back take, crucifix, those are really similar position situations to each other. Especially this is a typical situation. I keep his hands on the mat like this. That means I can do back take. Or sometimes he may stay on his hands not to get flipped in the turtle position like this. So in this situation, we can do crucifix. So from here, I switch my base. Then first I want to make sure that I keep his elbow open. Maybe let's go this way. So keep his elbow open, right? Whenever I just pull this leg out, I help him to close his elbow then we can no longer get a cross fix. And that's why from here, we're going to replace the frame like this, this position. Now, I still have the frame under his armpit, so he cannot close his elbow. After that, it's pretty simple. I just wanna use my head like this, as if we're making a lasso around the elbow like this. Then the best case scenario, I wanna completely drag like this. If that is difficult, it's okay. I just slide my leg in, then this is crucifix. To flip, I just roll forward or bring him back to the side or even roll this way. Then I can set up crucifix. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Leave any comment down below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet. Thank you guys. I'll you guys catch you in the next video. Bye.